The session outline is The Theory of Social Constructivism by Lev Vygotsky in the Zone of Proximal Development. At the end of this session, you will be able to define social constructivism and describe the zone of proximal development. As we have already discussed, knowledge construction takes place within the individual, but before that it is essentially a social process wherein the child learns to know about many things by interacting with others and then later that information is processed at the individual level. Therefore, we can say that knowledge construction involves the social process first and then the cognitive process later. Construction of knowledge by the individual happens in a social context, but for that to happen the individual has to be actively engaged in interaction with other fellow beings. And it has to be a collaborative environment where each one is ready to help and give their inputs and freely participate in that interaction. And once that is learnt at the social level, the individual tries to internalize so as to lead to cognitive development, but intermittently it has to be mediated by social disclosure which is very frequent. The give and take in the social interactions is very important for the cognitive development of the individual. In a social constructivist learning environment, different processes of interaction such as discussion, negotiation and sharing are very important in effective learning. Discussions bring in various perspectives from various participants in that interaction. Negotiation is give and take which happens for a particular aspect of learning. One person may be knowing more than the other and for a different aspect some other person will be a more knowledgeable person. So, in a group when everyone shares whatever they know more about a particular situation, the resulting synergy will lead to enhancement of cognitive development of the child. And the sharing of each one's perspectives enables the other person to view the same situation from not only one's lenses, but also from the other's lenses, which will result in widening the horizon of knowledge involved in that particular discussion. The three important factors which affect our cognitive development are culture, language and instruction. Let us see one by one how culture affects our cognitive development. When an individual grows in a particular cultural setting, his or her experiences will be limited to the exposure that particular culture provides for the individual. And there are culture specific terms, abbreviations, artifacts and to that extent our experiences and exposure are limited to them. Secondly, language. We use language to denote certain objects, artifacts and ideas. Every culture has specific language and terminology which it uses to communicate about certain customs, traditions, rituals, etc. I would like to give an example as to how it can be different, differently understood by different cultural people. Suppose we talk about prasad in a class. One student would interpret it as shira 
another would interpret it as uh, you know the bundi with sugar uh, uh, and someone else may interpret it as mere flowers with kumkum or so so the terminology is so closely interrelated with the culture that when a person from some other culture mentions certain things though the terminology may be the same it may be understood differently by people belonging to different cultures similarly some of the rituals in different countries and in different cultures the certain actions and behaviors are accepted as a mode of communication of certain emotions and in some they are not accepted we can know uh, more about it by going through google now that the whole world is accessible to us with the click of a mouse now let us see how instruction affects cognitive development now the teacher who is the main person who gives instruction to students in the class i, I mean the traditional class to so to say even now which is prevalent in our schools the teachers instruction is limited his or her culture or language when the teacher expresses certain things through her language limited by her culture that again when it is decoded by the students or interpreted by the students again there is some distortion in the understanding which is limited by the exposure of each individual through his culture and the language which they have learned to represent certain things so it is very wrong to think that whatever the teacher says in a class of 40 or 60 is understood or decoded in the same way the teacher wants it to be done because each one constructs one's knowledge interprets the words in the light of the culture in which they have grown these are the limiting factors of individual learning but the same thing can be used for our advantage if people can sit together and discuss and express their different perspectives share their experiences and interpret give the terminology the language which is used to interpret different things two main principles involved in social constructivism are the more knowledgeable other in short mko and the zone of proximal development in short zpd let us know what these mean what is zone of proximal development we all learn individually at home in the classroom through books through the teacher when we realize our fullest potential that indicates what i can do on my own but then if someone else is to lend a helping hand we can do much more i would like to give an analogy here you want to climb a tree or a wall you can reach only up to a certain level because of your height but if one is to give one shoulder for support you will be able to reach a even higher level in the same way you are able to learn on your own to a particular level but then if someone else can lend a helping hand or contribute those ideas you will be able to learn and which will take you to a different level which will enhance your cognitive development vygotsky calls that zone of cognitive development which can be developed with the help of more knowledgeable others as the zone of proximal development beyond that we will not be able to do even with someone's help that shows the ceiling of whatever we can do as individuals even with someone else's support the main contribution of vygotsky is the zone of proximal development which is an enhanced cognitive development 
which is possible with the help of a more knowledgeable other. Look at this beautiful diagrammatic representation of how social interaction enhances cognitive development. In the beginning, it is only individual learning which limits the amount of cognitive development that can happen and as and when some verbal instructions are given by a person, it does help a person to do the task a little better, but a mentoring by a person will definitely help the individual enhancement of skills and cognitive development. Just as the physical skills which can be done with a support from someone else, even the skills may appear too difficult for a child to master on one's own, but with a little guidance and encouragement from a knowledgeable person that is the more knowledgeable other, the child will be able to reach that level which otherwise would have been very difficult for him to master. So, what is known and what is not known? In between we have the zone of proximal development which can take us from what is known to even what is not known with the help of a mentor who is a more knowledgeable other who can be a parent or a peer or any adult, a teacher or someone in the society. Therefore, this theory is called social constructivism because the societal interaction is instrumental in constructing the knowledge or in other words the society is instrumental in enhancing the cognitive development of the individual. Let us again look at this diagram. One task, one particular task cannot be completed by myself. Then with some instructions or verbal help by a coach or a skilled peer, we can master that particular task a little more, but with guided assistance from a skilled peer, we can master much more and then the things can be internalized by oneself once this scaffolding is removed. Here I would like to take a minute explaining what is scaffolding. You must have observed in the buildings, high rise buildings, when they want to paint the building, they make a bamboo scaffolding as support which is made and as and when the individuals start working from above, when the work is over, they keep on removing those support. So, similarly, when an individual is not able to do certain things on one's own, the more knowledgeable other would lend a helping hand, maybe hold the hands and then take the individual through the task in the beginning, but as and when the individual becomes capable of doing that slowly, the assistance given to the individual is taken away so as to make the individual confident in doing the task on one's own. So, students we have seen that as the world is shrinking, the classrooms are becoming more diverse. We have in fact multicultural classrooms, multicultural education is the need of the hour and this cannot be done by one teacher giving instruction in a language which she has learnt. In order to result in the same kind of learning among so many students from diverse backgrounds, but the same number of students can be made to interact amongst themselves and the result would be the synergy and enhanced cognitive learning. Therefore, the teacher should make it a point to see that she gives only such tasks to the students which can be completed either through cooperative or collaborative learning. In short, to have diverse students in a classroom is a challenge. But a teacher can convert that into an opportunity by making them learn in collaborative groups so that there can be exchange of ideas and enhanced cognitive development as the students from various backgrounds and perspectives can share and learning becomes more enriched 
as a result of social interaction. Thank you.